I'm what you might call melanin deficient. You know, long time viewers of this channel know that I actually once upon a time had to do a skin treatment to kind of undo all the sun damage that was done to me over the years, which leaves me looking a little bit splotchy in real life. Now I've got sort of a filter on the camera that smooths all that out, but I'm always terrified that if I were to meet somebody out in the real world, they would just kind of be like, oh, you look like Deadpool. Now mostly I'm fine with not being able to tan, but the thing that sucks the most about it is, you know, I could work out for four hours a day for two straight years and just get totally jacked and still go to the beach and take my shirt off and everybody would be like, whoa, dude. And then they would all gather around me to, you know, tan off of me. Photographers use me to white balance their cameras. I once saw a polar bear at the zoo and it tried to come home with me. I'm not allowed to go into dark sky areas because the stars just vanish. Scientists actually recommend people wear eclipse glasses in my presence. I met Santa at the mall once and he actually asked me to guide his sleigh. I'm pale is what I'm saying. So much like Rudolph's nose, if you ever saw my naked chest, you might say it glows. But here's the thing. You'd kind of be right. Glowing animals, also known as bioluminescence, is actually not that uncommon in nature, especially in marine life. There are obviously many species of jellyfish and some octopods that have this ability. Anglerfish famously use a little thing that comes out of their forehead and glows to attract fish to then eat on them. And by the way, you always see these things and you think they're, they're kind of small. No, they can grow up to be 70 pounds. That's the size of my pit bull. Never going in the water again. Phytoplankton on the shores of the Maldives put on an amazing light show. I want to go to there. Waitamo glowworm caves in New Zealand make it look like you've been transported to another planet, which is really true of most of New Zealand. And right here in my backyard, you can find fireflies flashing lights to attract mates. See, fireflies find it sexy. Most bioluminescent animals do so by producing different types of enzymes called luciferin and luciferase. Luciferin. Might as well just call it Satan juice. Which is ironic because once upon a time it was known as Angel's Glow. One of the weirdest and coolest stories that came out of the Civil War was that some of the soldiers at the Battle of Shiloh, after being exposed to the rain and you know conditions for a couple of days, would find that their wounds were actually glowing blue. And then later at a field hospital they couldn't help but notice that the people who had the blue glowing wounds were actually surviving at a higher rate than the people who didn't. So of course they saw this as some kind of divine intervention and called it Angel's Glow. So 140 years later, a 17 year old high school student named Bill Martin became fascinated by this story. So he started to research it and found out that there's actually a bioluminescent type of bacteria called P. luminescence that lives in a type of nematode that could be found in the conditions that one would expect in that Civil War battlefield. And one little trick of P. luminescence is that it actually produces an enzyme that kills other types of bacteria. So this bacteria, this glowing that they saw in the wound was actually keeping off infections. That's why they survive longer. So if you ever find that one of your wounds is glowing, that means you've been out in the rain for like two days. Dude, get inside. The question is, if bioluminescence is so common in nature, could it also happen in humans? Is it really that impossible? Because uh, there are some stories. One incident was recorded over 100 years ago by a British researcher named Harroward Carrington. Sounds like... Benedict Cumberbatch's grandfather, but he noticed the story of a little boy who started glowing blue on his deathbed. In fact, the people around him thought that he had caught fire and tried to put it out unsuccessfully because there was no fire. And in 1869, a letter that was written to the magazine English Mechanic described the story of a woman whose big toe started glowing so brightly that she could see it through her covers. The letter said, quote, rubbing increased the phosphorescent glow and it spread to her foot. Fumes were also given off, making the room disagreeable, and both lights and fumes continued when the foot was held in a basin of water, and even washing with soap could not dim the toe. It lasted for three quarters of an hour before fading away and was witnessed by her husband. <sighs> Jeez, honey, I don't know. Have you, uh, have you tried Neosporin? But one of the most well-known cases of glowing humans was the case of Signora Anna Moreno, who also became known as the glowing woman of Pirano. She was an asthma patient who, over the course of a few weeks in 1934, began producing a blue glow from her breasts. So many jokes, and they're all inappropriate. I can't tell any of them. I'm about to explode. This was actually witnessed by several doctors who postulated that it might have been something akin to the angel's glow that I was describing before, or it might have come from extra amounts of sulfates in her blood. Now, I know what you're thinking. These are stories that came from a long time ago from people who crapped in outhouses and believed in fairies. This is totally not a thing. and. That's fair, but some new research has shown that humans can sort of produce light. 
sort of. In 2009, a Japanese study showed that the human body can produce light in extremely small quantities. They made this discovery using super sensitive cameras to monitor five healthy male volunteers for 20 minutes every three hours inside a light tight room for three days straight. They found that the participants glowed throughout the day with the brightest spots being on the forehead, cheeks, and neck, and more brightly in the afternoon and dimmer at night. The light is a thousand times less intense than anything that we could see with our naked eye, and it's thought to be the byproduct of biochemical reactions involving free radicals. In other words, it has to do with our metabolism, which would explain why it varied throughout the day. It's thought that these excited free radicals can interact with fluorophores, which produces a photon, just a tiny little packet of light. Now visible light, as we all know, is just a tiny sliver of the vast electromagnetic spectrum, which also includes infrared, which we do produce as a byproduct of heat that comes out of our body. But we're not talking about infrared, we're talking about visible light is coming out of our bodies. Kind of crazy. So the next time somebody tries to tan by standing next to me, I can just say, hey, it's all about my metabolism. Was that crazy? I thought that was crazy. I thought it would be fun to share with you guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you haven't been to the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts, we got a lot of cool, we got some new shirts that I haven't actually been wearing on here yet. I need to get some, but they're a lot of fun. They're designed by an amazing artist named Michael from Prague. So if you can go and buy one of these shirts, not only will everybody think you're super cool, but you're supporting a really cool designer over in Prague and you're helping out the channel. So everybody wins. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, I do videos just like this every Thursday and every Monday. You can go check out some of those. And if you like those too, please hit subscribe and you'll be the first one to see them when they come out in your way, in your face. All right, with that, I thank you guys for watching. Please go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.